Welcome to this tutorial video on using password safe as a password manager option. Password safe is a free option designed by Bruce Schneiner. I hope I'm not butchering that too bad. It's available at pwsafe.org. Link will be in the description below. If you find the content in this useful, please feel free to give it a like and subscribe for future videos. And so here we have the download Windows option. Go ahead and download from the fosshub.com site, a free and open source. Get the 64-bit installer and we'll just run it when it downloads. Give this access. You'll want to read and accept the license terms. And the install process, pretty straightforward for most everybody. You can just use these defaults here and choose the language support if you need anything different. You can also add a command line utility for advanced use. If you are familiar with the command line and you would like to try this option, go ahead and click that there. We'll just move through regular location and program files for the install is fine. It's a quick install, very lightweight program. There's a quick note on a couple of the pros and cons of password safe. Uh, as far as the pros, we've got it's free, fully featured, easy to use, and it is available for Linux. It's really just a one con that I can think of, really, and that is that it is um, only available on the device the that the uh, database is saved on. So this could be a USB, uh, and you could use it in device device that had or from device to device that had. Um, password safe installed however you would need uh, to not lose that USB plus that would be uh, kind of a security risk besides losing it um, if it if it was fell into the wrong hands and your master password was cracked somebody could have access to all of the different passwords so just something to think about there with the app installed we'll double click the desktop icon if you've never opened it before, there won't be any fields populated. If you had any other saves, they would be populated here, and you could just provide the combination. Since we haven't, we'll go ahead and click the New button. Default name is fine. You can note the location is going to be in Documents, My Saves. And go ahead, and we'll just give this a complicated and difficult to guess password. This one should be very difficult to guess as it's going to be the the one that unlocks the rest of the passwords. And everything in here, we can go ahead and kind of automate the process of creating difficult passwords. Now, one thing to note is that if you create a difficult password for something like Facebook, then you... Um, then you want to go log into Facebook on another device besides your computer. It's going to be, you're going to have to enter that difficult password. So for some of those, I just, I recommend creating long sentences for a password, like a past phrase, uh, the lazy brown fox jumped over the fence. I mean, throw in some special characters and that's an amazingly difficult password, even if it is a random, but I mean, it's a more known one. So you might want to flip up your saying either way. So now that we're in, uh, it's a typical regular application, Windows application. We've got a file tab, which hope it, which does the regular things you'd expect, saving, opening, closing. We've got some advanced functionality here with the export to and import from. This we can do different things with different databases. Uh, if we had an, an existing one we wanted to bring on in, uh, we can merge databases. A lot of... Uh, a lot of really unique and 
cool functionality, especially for a free program. Now, the biggest con, as discussed, is the fact that this is only located in one place. Now, you know, in your home network, you can set it up to where it's in a central place that you can access from different computers. Um, we can go into those in a separate video, but for the most part, we're going to get on into the main functionality that you'll be using. And the first thing we'll want to do is set up our options. And inside of our options, we can create intermediate backups before saving. I recommend doing that just in case something happens. It's usually in the same folder unless you specify otherwise, but you can go ahead and back up each database, give it a directory and I mean, I'll give it a naming convention and a directory here. Inside of some of the more important options that we'll want to deal with is uh, when we're locking, when the database closes. So I recommend that um, if you are going to be at your workstation for a little bit, you might want to make this 10, 15 minutes. If you don't want it to uh, lock on you, you can go ahead and just make it, you can uncheck this and just make it to where on the lock, workstation lock, it relocks. You can change the difficulty to unlock the uh, password database itself. So this is just inside of options, a couple of different system options that we have, 25 passwords. Um, certain things and other options that we have in here but for the most part uh, security and password history you may use a couple of these different ones in here but mostly out of security is where you're going to be looking change a few things and then so cancel out of those and that's inside of manage options now another important place to be is the manage password policies and inside of the we have a default policy you can create a new one if you are so inclined i typically just stick with editing the existing one usually change this to about 20 after the number lock is on uh, now some systems bless their hearts aren't able to have such complex lengthy or complex passwords and in this in those cases we need to uh, kind of adjust we'll have to I've had it to where I've had to take off like eight characters to add one uh, to add a password to a uh, system that just wasn't it's not the password saves fault but it is like a, a, uh, the uh, system itself didn't uh, couldn't have passwords that long but so I usually try and just tack on three of each of these and uh, you can so for symbols not all um, not all systems can take all of these symbols some of them are blocked for whatever reasons they're uh, for security purposes, typically is why they wouldn't be used. Uh, another thing you can do is, so you can specify whatever symbols you wanted to use in here. If we only wanted to use the asterisk or a, so, I mean, we would just take that out. We, if we wanted to use just the plus sign and the asterisk, we would just leave these in here. If we, what, we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and just use the, easy to read characters so this this will leave out most ambiguous options um, instead of using a, a lowercase l and a one there it would probably be like a uppercase l would be used and those kinds of things you can choose other options for hexadecimal digits if you feel the the desire to do that or a system needs it but once you're done with that you can go ahead and save the policy and okay there's a couple different ways we can create an entry we can right click and add an entry or a group or we can come on up here to edit and add an entry here or we can be highlighted on there and press Control a and add an entry We'll go through adding a group in a moment, but now we'll get into the process of creating an entry. So for this, we'll just call it random site. 
Um, the username would be whatever the username is for the site. We don't actually have one right now. But so uh, on here, we just generate our password. It's going to follow along with our policies. We can take a look that it's just going to put spit out some random generated gibberish. And this is the this among uh, a few of the other benefits of this is what is so awesome about using these. They'll generate passwords that uh, are not easy to guess. They actually don't follow any kind of convention. So anybody trying to guess the password somewhere along the way they're not going to have as likely it, it'll take much longer for them to figure this password out than than it would uh you know um you know my dog's name's lucy or something like that you know uh you wouldn't want that to be your password especially if you actually had a dog named lucy but so we have a couple other options we can give it a url so if, you know we, we don't have we don't visit this website very often or whatever um we can go ahead and uh put the URL in there that way we can just access it and go to it when uh, we need to and here we can put notes in random or any notes that you need uh, that you wanted to and they're not displayed uh, by default while the by or you have to actually click on it to uh, see the notes so but here we can hide our password again um, and we can press OK and we now we have have an option for the first time to set our username as like to set a default username. So if you use like your email, your Gmail address or your Outlook address or whatever, um, it would it would prompt you here to save that. And if that is something you'd like to do, you can go ahead and do that. I usually just say no because I want to specify my usernames at um, at the time of login. So here. We can test to make sure this is working correctly. Uh, we should, if we double click on the entry, on any entry, we will copy, automatically copy the uh, password to the clipboard. So we've done that. I've double clicked and here is an OK. So if we go over here and do a paste, we should get our password. All right. So simple pretty uh, pretty standard if we had uh, another entry in here let's uh, add another one no group yet and we'll just add second um, another user generate random password and okay now if we click on this one and eventually you'll get to a point where you'll just say don't remind me again and then come on down here and it'll be a totally whatever the totally different string is um, pretty useful technology again the biggest limitation to using password safe is that it is limited to the device that the database is on so here we'll focus on adding a group and this will be group one and inside of group one, we can create, now we did that that with a right click add group, but we could have done that in a couple, the, the same different ways where we add group in here. Doesn't look like there is a uh, keyboard shortcut for it, but you can add group in here or the way we just did there. And once you've got a group created, you can just add a group inside of here. So this would be group one, account and then you know, another username uh, random user to one just generate and okay and now we'll have this so if you were using you know you could imagine that this is Facebook this is a social media folder and then you could you know twitter or whatever other socials that you have you know your financials your banks could be in another group and they can all be condensed if you find that you know you created one and you'd like to put it in the group it's as easy as just dragging and dropping and now random site is also in there and uh I want to cover editing a entry. So let's say that I wanted to change the password or I was forced to change the password here. We can just right click on an entry. You can also have it highlighted and click edit entry as well. 
come on in here and we can just say super random. We'll just make a super random password here. And go ahead and show. And that'll apply it to the uh, confirm password field, even though that looks kind of like a jumbled mess of characters here. It's a scrambled version of this one here. So we hide it again and come on down here and apply. Click OK. And then if we come on in here, open up Notepad or go to our site and copy paste, I mean, uh, Control V or right click and paste, we should get our value that we just edited to. And that is how you edit a, an entry in Password Safe. Pretty useful for the fact that it's free and it is a awesome tool to use. I recommend it highly. And in future videos, we can go over, um, there's actually also biometric authentication with YubiKey. Uh, and other options but there's definitely some really really nice functionality in here it's a really well put together product and pretty easy to use after uh, creating a few it's pretty stock and standard with your right click for doing a lot of the functionality you've got a couple keyboard shortcuts and whatnot appreciate taking the time to watch the video uh, don't forget to like and subscribe for future comment, uh, future content 